watched Ready Player One for the second time. And this is a 2018 movie directed by Steven Spielberg, a very big name. And it is also based on a novel, I believe. So uh, it says Certified Fresh Rotten Tomatoes. And I agree. You know, I do think it's a, you know, it's an enjoyable time. Uh, but honestly, my favorite part of this movie is the philosophy it offers. It's, um, you know, it does kind of shove it in your face. But that's fine because um, I don't mind that because, I don't know, it was the most enjoyable part so I don't mind it being shoved in my face. Um, it basically parallels like real life but we'll talk about it a bit more later. So basically the plot is James Halliday is this very nerdy pop culture obsessed guy like myself who um, is, he basically escapes the struggles and anxiety of real life through uh, media and escapism. Also describes me exactly. Um, but he is also kind of a genius and he creates this VR experience called The Oasis and it's like the year 2050 or something. Um, and uh, basically this society, like the world, revolves around The Oasis. Like it's directly tied into the economy, um, you know, it's your livelihood, it's how you escape for fun with games, it's how you socialize with your friends and everything. It's like, it's everything. It's the most important thing in this world, in this life. So, yeah, and basically this uh, other guy, Wade Watts, is a, a diehard fan of uh, Halliday, and Halliday basically, on the day Halliday passes, he, the, the Easter egg content is unlocked, so you have to find three keys through three separate like challenges and it's uh, you know everyone knows hopefully you know what some video game lingo is I don't want to explain everything but I will explain an easter egg basically an easter egg is just like hidden content that you wouldn't be able to probably find on your first um, playthrough it's like requires a little bit of exploring and uh, yeah so and uh, basically whoever uh, fully completes the easter egg gets to the final step inherits all of Halliday's work and the Oasis and his fortune and becomes like the richest and most powerful person on the planet basically. Um, and he's tailored it specifically so that only true people who get it uh, will be able to um, inherit the Oasis. So they have to have like pop culture understanding and like but like appreciate real life for it being real and there's like a whole so I'm going to be discussing some spoilers that kind of was a spoiler by accident but it's, it's about the meaning of the movie, too. Um, so yeah, there will be some spoilers. And basically, Wade Watts uh, is trying to stop um, Ben Mendelsohn's character, Nolan, um, from... Because it's like an evil corporation, and it's actually weird how powerful the corporation Because at the end of the movie, the police show up. It's like, where the hell have the police have been the whole movie? So, I don't know why the IOI is able to exist. I guess uh, the world took a turn for the worse because it's supposed to represent our real world in like 30 years from now. But um, honestly, it looks pretty far gone. I don't think that's going to... I don't think we're going to be like that in 2050 at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, the IOI is weirdly powerful, very evil corporation. They have like these slave... Like, why is slavery allowed in the society? Like, it just doesn't... There's this little... My number one problem with this movie is how much it expects me to suspend my disbelief. Normally, I am really good at suspending my disbelief. I can do it for, like, almost anything. But if you are a video game um, player, especially if you play MMOs, you know for a fact that everything that's happened in this movie could never happen in real life, okay? Let's just picture the Oasis in real life, um, especially if it had the importance it did. Like, there would be kids running around calling each other the N-word, um, you get to see in the movie that PvP is enabled at all times, it's on hardcore mode, so if someone dies, they're zeroed out and done for good. So that means, like, especially in a game like Rust, people, like, ex for example, you, you boot up Rust, people will bash in the naked people on the beach with a rock, even though they don't give any loot. It's just because it's fun. That's, that's like, that's what would happen if this was real. Everyone would be murdering each other all the time. They might even go as far as like raping each other, to be honest, because you'll see some of the suits are like full touches. Like if you hit Ben Mendelsohn in the crotch in the Oasis, he gets hit in the crotch in real life and he actually feels the pain. So I think people would be assaulting each other, raping each other, 
calling each other the n-word, stealing from each other, murdering each other, there's no way it would function as well as it does. So that's like the first big one for me. I'm sure general audiences would even think twice about that, but for me it's extremely hard to stop thinking about that. There's, there's no way it would be as peaceful and productive as it is shown on screen. Okay, number two problem sort of has, is on the same um, idea. I don't like how simple the Easter egg was to finish, basically. Okay? You are joking, okay? If this was in real life, okay, especially with the stakes it had, it would have been solved between like six to ten hours in real life. No problem. Not even a doubt. There's not a single question. If this guy's as famous as like, um, like Steve Jobs, for example, in real life, there's no way it would have taken this long. Impossible. Okay, in real life, this is getting solved in six to ten hours. You're joking. The whole, like, this is a spoiler. On the racetrack, all you had to do was go backwards? Are you joking? Are you serious? Okay, that one, that specific Easter egg would have been figured out immediately. Like, within ten minutes of the Easter egg coming out, someone would have tried going backwards. That is the most obvious thing ever. It's not like he randomly found it. Like, that's mostly how Easter eggs are in real life, in real video games. You just randomly find them. But like, they're actively searching for this. There's like a whole company and corporation specifically to find this. So you should gather some of the world's greatest Easter egg hunters, because they're out there. Especially like Call of Duty Easter eggs. There's some elaborate shit in real life in Call of Duty Easter eggs. And they figure that shit out on the same day. And those Call of Duty Easter eggs are way harder than this one. This Easter egg was a joke. So the Easter egg was way too easy, and that was obviously the primary plot. So that was really stupid, I thought. Seriously, all you had to do was go backwards. Someone would just re accidentally do that, okay? There's no way that's a, no, that's bullshit. So that one's just straight up bullshit that is impossible, that would never happen in this, even though it did, I don't believe it. That would never happen in this and it would never happen in real life. You wouldn't have to go to some, like, um, you wouldn't have to go to some museum and talk to the curator to get like, whoa, you have to go backwards. I wish we could just turn things backwards, put the pedal to the metal. You don't need any of that garbage. Someone's just gonna accidentally go backwards or someone's gonna... It's just the most obvious thing in the world to do, especially when you have an impossible race like that. It is the most obvious thing you could possibly do. That's just stupid. The second Easter egg is probably the hardest, but I still don't think it would take that long at all. You know, it's his 11th favorite horror movie, The Shining. I haven't seen The Shining. I wish I'd seen it. I've seen all the famous scenes from The Shining, but I wish I'd actually seen it. Um, so that one, fair enough, okay, that one, that would have been the longest step, and then the rest of the steps are super simple again. So, yeah, I don't know. The Easter egg, the entire plot of the movie was just didn't really work for me, uh, kind of fell apart because I just can't do it. I, I can't do it. I try to suspend my disbelief in movies, but like, this was too far, this was too stupid, there's no way this would ever happen. Maybe if I didn't play video games, I could under, I could maybe buy it if I didn't play video games, but I do. And um, this would be the easiest video game in the world, basically, if it was real. Uh, so just nothing makes sense, none of the rules. He, he wanted to invent a video game about no rules, but uh, that just doesn't work. You know, it's basically, it's going to turn the purge very quick, okay? So that's not, val that's not valid, that wouldn't work. I don't, I don't believe it. Maybe if this was like the year 2500, I could believe it, because then our society would have changed. But this is only 30 years in the future. It's supposed to represent real life, so that absolutely would not happen in 30 years. Um, so yeah, but, uh, so that's my little rant, um, well, long rant, but those are my two big problems. I also thought Wade, uh, was a bit of a generic, kind of boring main character. He didn't, he wasn't bad, but he was kind of meh, he was kind of whatever. Uh, I liked Artemis a little bit more. I thought it was weird that, um, I thought it was weird that they played it off like Artemis is, like, ugly or something. She's not. She is, she's hot, even with the, the, you know, the deformity. It doesn't change her appearance at all. She's still... She's still really hot, so I thought that was weird that they played it off like that. I also thought it was weird that Wade fell in love with her instantly. I mean, like, instantly. Like, I know Wade, like, watches her. She's, like, probably an e-girl on Twitch, but, like, you don't fall in love with someone because you watch them on Twitch, so that was a bit weird. Um, but let's let's talk about some things I liked, okay? that That's pretty much the end of it, of my dislikes. I love the art style, okay? Obviously, visually, this is very impressive, very unique. I thought it was really cool. Um, the references are very cool as well. It's not, I mean, it is overstuffed, but it's sort of in the background. It's not like shoved in your face, like something like Deadpool, where he's just constantly referring to things with his voice. You're just kind of, if you're paying attention to the background, you're going to see lots of uh, background references, which is really cool. Like uh, Minecraft, 
Overwatch, Tracer, uh, Starcraft, I think, I don't know if that was a Marine or if it was Tychus or if it was Raynor. Um, you know, there's the Alien, there's the Shining, there's the DeLorean um, from Back in the Future. They mentioned stuff like Fast Times at Ridgemont High, uh, Ferris Bueller's Days Off, The Breakfast Club, there's a lot, okay? So there's for, I love that the references are from like really old stuff to really new stuff. Like there's Space Invaders and Atari, and then there's like newer stuff like Overwatch. So I think it's really relevant, um, and it includes the, all of the audience. So I don't really get some of the older references, but like it, it tries to include all of the audience, which is really smart. Um, yeah, so I also liked just, uh, you know, even though it's stupid, like, I don't think this would ever happen in real life. I do like the idea of it, right? It is really cool, like, what if this could happen? Um, I think it would be a disaster, but it is cool to think about, and it would be cool to have in real life. And that brings me to my last uh, really good point, so I really love this. This is my favorite part of the movie, is the philosophy behind it. Basically, the deeper message, although it's not, like, it's not hard to see it. You know, it basically represents modern day society and how we're all slaves to technology and how we all partake in escapism because real life is really hard and we'd rather just not we'd rather just um, not have to deal with the stress and anxiety of real life and have to take those leaps of faith like um, Halliday says he, he's spot on that's exactly how I feel and how a lot of people feel so I think it's a really cool representation of how we're all slaves to technology basically and um, how, on one hand, it would be cool if this was to exist in real life, but on the other hand, real life is important. Reality is real. You shouldn't, like, you know, with MMOs, I've been addicted to MMOs for sure. They've taken over my life. You do not want to give it your life to games like the Oasis. Like, um, this is a step further than a game. It's like a VR experience. It's like a second to life. You want to live your real life. You don't want to live a second life. So I think that's a really cool message. So I'm going to give Ready Player One a 3 out of 5 stars. I do like it. I do recommend it. Um, but man, you should probably watch The Shining. I wish I'd seen The Shining, so you should probably watch The Shining before this. But that's kind of a, I don't know. They, they kind of fill you in, though. You know, even if you haven't watched The Shining, they do kind of fill you in. He's like, hey, that was in the movie. That wasn't in the movie. And I also want to say the best, the best moment of the movie was um, when he says, it's fucking Chucky. That was really awesome. I love that. Uh, I, th I think it's PG-13, right? You can, say, you can say the F word one time in a PG movie, I believe. So that was a smart usage of it. Um, and yeah, so I've been a little harsh on it. Uh, that's because it's my second time watching it, but honestly I felt this exact same way on the first time I watched it. So I think it's an okay movie. I think it's really visually impressive and boundary pushing, but I just think it falls apart when you really like think about anything really.